This is a day of, of, of the moving of the Spirit. So I want to encourage you to rise up and don't just uh, sit around and play church. It's not a time to play. It's a time, I believe, that God's going to awaken, awaken things. Last week I spoke about a wedding that I performed a couple of weeks ago about two Aussie battlers that uh, came together. And while I was sharing that at the end of the message, I looked up at the clock and I realized that I'd mostly been speaking for too long. And uh, so I sort of hurried through it. And when I got home, I got mad with myself because I missed the point. <laughs> you know, I find when I hurry things, I miss the point that I was wanting to uh, really bring. But uh, I married this, a couple of Aussie battlers. They'd been living together for five years. They had two little children. And, uh, you know, they were familiar with each other. And, um, but they decided that they wanted to get married. They had no money, so uh, I opened up the hub to them and we um, decorated it all up and it was really, really pretty. And uh, they came down and they, we got married them. But as the, uh, this guy, by the way, is a truck driver, and um, as he saw his bride coming down the aisle, uh, he just burst into tears. And, uh, and I was quite amazed by this because I knew that like, they'd been sort of living together for five years. And uh, all of a sudden he, he sees her because she'd sort of prepared herself and she'd had her hair done nice and the makeup and everything like that and she looked very, very pretty. And uh, not that she hadn't looked like that before, but he just burst into tears and he said to me, he said, Neil, he said, I wanted just to fall on my knees and and, and just sob. She, he said, it took me everything just to keep standing there. And when she actually got to the aisle and uh, at the altar and they were holding hands, it took him a long time before he could stop weeping. He just tears just pouring out of his eyes. And, and anyhow, I, that was it. And I thought that was nice. And, and because I was just thinking about it as I was doing whatever I was doing, and I was just thinking about that. And, and I believe the Lord spoke to me. He said, nearly said, that's the church. He said, you can be familiar with, the, with, with God and you can be familiar with the Holy Spirit and Jesus and, and even everything that we've done. And we can, we can sometimes take God for granted and take our, you know, and, but we need to be able to see Jesus in a new light. We've got to be able to see him with new ears, with new eyes rather. <laughs> I missed the point again. We, we've, we've, we've really got to be able to see him in all his beauty and in all his glory, we perhaps haven't seen him. We've seen him in a, in, a, in a part, like he'd seen her in a part, but he never saw her in this way. And, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we can just be flipping about the way we live too. But uh, now she's taken time to do herself up. And, 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 but I believe that we, the church, need to see Jesus in all of his beauty. And some of those songs that we're singing this morning, he comes running after me. And I don't know about you, but that brings a tear to my eye. When I start to think about me and how, well, sometimes you look at yourself and you just see the rubbish and the, and the negative, neg negativity, the failures and the, and the defeat in your life where you fail. But his goodness kept running after me. As Tom was talking today about jobs and things like that, is, that's, that's God running after him. That's God preparing for him. And, and, and all of a sudden you start seeing Jesus in a different light. And, and, and you see him in all of his glory. Friend, I don't think the church has yet seen him in all of his glory. Because I believe when we see him in all of his glory, and sometimes it might be in, at a prayer meeting, and sometimes it might be as we're singing songs of worship and praise, I believe that spontaneously we're just going to fall on our face and weep before God. I'm not saying let's do it now, you know what I mean? Because we can manufacture that, okay? We can all we could we could all be like little robots and do that. Let's all fall on our face now and start being an actress and we'll get an Academy Award. Or we can be very, very real. And uh let his presence come over us and see him in, in, in his beauty that will cause us to fall on our face. See, it's easy to take Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and even God for granted. 
heal me, bless me, cross for me, etc. And never ask, what can I do for you? Or what do you want me to do? And I believe that that's going to be the cry that's going to start coming out of, out of the church. Where it's not just do this for me, God, do that for me, but it's God, will, what do you want me to do for you? What can I do for you? So, Father, this morning I ask you to come in your own special way. Lord, you are the head and we are the body, whether we're this your people. But, Lord, we want you to help us this morning by revealing yourself in such a way and speaking to us. And, Lord, that we come to a place where we lift up our hearts to you and cry out, God, what can I do for you? What, what would you want me to do? And Lord, we just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for that today. See, it, it says here in, the, in, in Mark chapter 16, it tells us to go into all the world. I'm just going to go into that a little bit later on. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's what God tells us to do, go. God tells us to uh, forgive. He wants us to forgive people. You know, forgiveness, I find, is very, very difficult. Sometimes it's easy to say, but because sometimes things that have happened have wounded us deep on the inside, and, and there's not one of us in this room that, that hasn't been that way. Actually, not one of us that hasn't been affected greatly by, by people. And many times people don't mean it, but somehow or other we, we take it on that way. And uh, we get hurt. And so comes there, I believe that God really, really wants us to forgive. He wants us to repent. He wants us to repent. And it says this in 2 Corinthians 7, uh, 14 and 15, which we know very, very well. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. And when I was writing this down, and I, I wanted to write a lot of the scriptures down that I'm going to use this morning. And, uh, and I just saw that word humble. You know, that, that, it, it, sometimes we just go over things, and, but God wants us to humble ourselves. And, and I, I think, God, oh, that's, that's not easy. Humility, because, you know, we can have a lot of false humility, but real humility, where, where we humble ourselves and, and start to cry out to God and call upon His name and, and, and just... I, I don't know for you and for me, it's mostly all different. But to humble ourselves and to pray and, and seek his face. See, a lot of times when we pray, we're just telling God how to do something. We're asking God for something or something like that. But, but when we pray, let's start to seek his face. God, I want you. I want to draw near to you. God, I need you more more than the air I breathe, more than anything. I need Jesus today. I don't know about you, but I just need Him. Anybody else like that? Just, I just need Him. I want to seek your face. Turn from our wicked ways. Our wicked ways and dear me. This, this prayer, it's, it's only a couple of verses, but man, there's, there's a magnitude of, of, of work in there. It could take some people a lifetime just to, to fulfill what he's asked us to do there. To, to, to turn from our wicked ways. Then, he said, I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive your sin and heal your land. Amazing, amazing words. People who will call by my name. What really stops the hand of God and what really... Gets the hand of God to move. I believe repentance is what gets the hand of God to move. Amen. I believe that crying out to God, seeking His face, and and uh, letting God be God. Acts uh, uh, two thirty nine. It says this. It says, I, I want to talk a little bit about Pentecost this morning. I want to talk about the power of God. I want to talk about what God has invested in the church what God has put inside of every one of us, that many times we, we don't fully value it, we don't fully understand what He's done on the inside of us, and uh, so we, we do things in part, but we don't do it with a total understanding. 
And I believe that God wants us to have a full understanding because, you see, there's a lot of doctrines and, and theologies and, and false teachings out there that, that confuse the church. And there's so many different thought patterns and goodness knows what else that is, that is going on today. The grace message has been distorted. The, the, there's, there's things there that have been taken out of place. I believe in grace, by the way, but I don't believe in greasy grace. I believe in real grace. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the promises of God. God has given us precious, precious promises. And there's a lot of people today that, that believe that, that the Pente Pentecost was dealt with and finished with the apostles. But the Bible says this in Acts chapter 2, verse 39. It says, The promises unto you and unto your children and to them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God will call. The promises of God. The promises of God are real. Now, I want to speak a little bit about, the, about the, the mighty Holy Spirit power. You see, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit used to fall on selected ones that God chose. But today, praise God, the Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, and they were all in one accord, in one place, there was a sound that came from heaven and it filled the whole place where they were seated. And they began to speak with other tongues. They began to glorify God. They began to worship. They began, and, but they were filled with the power of God. And then Peter stood in the midst as people were mocking them and, surprised, and, and just saying all silly things about them. And Peter stood up with the power of God on him. And he said, these men are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it's only the th third hour, but this is the promise that God spoke about in the book of Joel. This is what he said through the prophet Joel, in the last days I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. I believe that this outpouring that that, that prophet, prophet was speaking about is going to come on all flesh. We're all going to see it together. There's a universal outpouring of the Spirit. It won't just be at, at this here or Pentecost or that place there. It's going to be felt and it's going to be touched all over the world. The Bible says, As truly as I live, all the earth is filled with my glory. The glory will cover the earth. I believe that the next move of God will be His glory coming down on earth touching people, filling people. But you see, there was a man by the name of Samson. He was in the Bible and, and he, he was there. The children of Israel, the Bible says, had done evil in the sight of God. And, they were, and God put him into bondage to the Philippines for 40 years. But God began to move and God began to, to do what he wanted to do and he began to raise up a person that was a deliverer. He spoke to uh, Samson's mother and said, you know, you're going you're gonna to bear a son. No, you're barren, you're going to bear a son. And he's going to begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. This boy was touched by the power of God. Many times there when things went wrong, people rose up against him. It says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The same Spirit that Jesus said, when he stood in the midst and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. That same Spirit of God that can come on every one of us came on, on Samson from different times and, and things started to happen. He rose up and says there that he picked up the jawbone of an ass and slew a thousand men. It, 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 just the power of God that came upon him. But this man really did not respect or understand really what was going on. The Bible says that, that he, first of all, he spoke to his mother and he said, There's a woman down there, I want her. Father said to his son, He said, Son, there's, there's women in, of our people, you know, choose one of them. He said, I don't want one of them, I want that one and get me that one. Friend, you see, We've got to humble ourselves. We, there's got to come a move of the Spirit that I believe that the church sometimes has, has risen up and become so, so 
full of themselves, their ability, and think that this is not God, but this is, I can do this. I don't even need God. I've spoken a few times about the, about the man that, that came to Australia, the, the Chinese man. They called him the miracle man. Man that was full of the Holy Ghost and fire. He went to America and went through all the large churches over there and ministered and looked at the, all their beautiful buildings and everything like that. And, and as, they were, as he was leaving the nation, one of the men that was with him said, what impressed you the most about the American churches? the American megachurches. And he looked at them with a look on his face and he said, how much you can do without God? <laughs> and see, the thing is that there's a lot of things we can do without God. But unless the Lord builds the house, they that build it labor in vain. The watchmen stay up late, get up early in the morning for nothing. And so that's why we've got to, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. God, without you, we are nothing. But with you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Not my ability, not what I can do. It's what God can do through a broken vessel. Humble ourselves. Forgive. Then I will hear from heaven. I believe that we're living in a day when people's lives are getting right with God. I believe that God is moving by Spirit. So Samson did all these things, and this man that God raised up to, to, to deliver children of God flaunted himself, and he finds a, a harlot by the name of Jezebel. Delilah, rather. Sorry, wrong horse. This is a different bridle. <laughs> Delilah and, and she, you know, they, they, they offered to pay her money, find out where his strength comes from. And of course, he, he fooled them for a few times and she'd say, the Philistines have come upon you and he'd jump up and bust the band, whatever they'd bound him with and he would knock a few of them over and and, uh, but finally, he said, I've not had a razor to my head. Talked about the seven locks on his head. And of course, we know that this time she said, I believe I know the heart. And one of the saddest verses in the Bible, when they took the, the hair off, those locks off, and they bound him. And she cried out again, the Philistines are upon you. And sprung up out like before, not realizing that the Holy Spirit had departed from him. And you know, sometimes I believe that we the church have got to realize that sometimes we can be so full of ourselves and, we, and our own ability that we don't realize that the Holy Spirit's departed from us. We're so full of anger and bitterness and goodness knows what else that we don't realize that the Holy Spirit has departed from us. We don't realize this man that God had raised up to, to deliver is now found. His eyes have been taken out. He's bound with chains and fetters. He's locked up to a grinding mill and he's just gone round and round and round in circles. You know, sometimes it's a good thing if we're just going round and round in circles, it's a good time to have a look as the Holy Spirit departed from me. Would you come back and help me? This man that God had raised up to deliver. Perhaps it's a picture of the church today. God raised this church up, the church rather, to deliver us. To, de to help deliver the people in him. John 8.32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. We need the spirit of truth to get around us. I believe that God wants us to have the same power that those of the Bible had. No different. To help us reach our generation. 
You see, the, the disciples in the early church, they touched the then known world. But now we can be bound with religion, religious traditions, political correction, correctness, having a form of God, but no power. 2 Timothy 3 5. Having a form of God, but no power. God must find a way to bring the power back into the church. Amen? To bring the power back into the church. I had a little light in our pantry and uh, used to come on when you walked into it. And I'd, I walked in one day and it never come on. And I thought, oh, that's a stupid light. I'm going to throw it away. And I looked at the back and I noticed that it had a little catch on it. So I opened up the catch and there was some little batteries in there. So I pulled the old ones out and put a few new ones in. And away it goes. It's still in there. I don't know about you, but some of us might need a recharge. We might need a Holy Ghost recharge. Amen? I, we might need a dose of the ghost. <laughs> we, might have a, we might need to ha come and have a drink. Have a drink, I said. Not go out up the pub and have a drink, but have a drink of that new wine that God's pouring out. Amen? Be not drunk with wine where is an excess, but be what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the God. Amen. I, I believe God wants us to have that power that, that they had. I believe that, you know, that God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above. I want to just read to you again. The promise is unto you and unto your children and to them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This promise is for you. It is yea and amen. Do you believe that today? See, what, what will change? What will change the church? What, what will change me? What, you know, I, okay, I've, been a, I've been a pastor now for a long time. I've been ministering. I've seen revivals. I've seen um, moves of the Spirit. I've seen amazing things happen. Then I saw like as if the well dried up or the batteries went out in the, in the, in the light. I've seen where, where it felt like it was dry, where it was hard. People were talking all the time about, about how difficult it was and how this it was and the attacks and goodness knows what else. What, what will change me? What will change you? I believe that hunger, I want to just linger on hunger for the presence of God. If I hunger, hunger for the anointing, I know the anointing. I know what the anointing's like. I know what it's like to be under the spout where the glory comes out. I, I know what it's like to, to, to not just feel, but, but to, to literally be impregnated with the power of God. I know what it's like to lift up your hand and, and four or five hundred people would fall under the power. I know what it's like to see when God moves. I'm not trying to, I'm not being boastful because I know that Neil's hand is nothing. But with God, it is something. Amen. Without God, we're, we're nobodies. But with God, we can be, we, God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think. So a hunger, getting hungry for the presence of God, hungry for revival will bring about something in your own life. I, I believe that, that we've got to, you know, just get so hungry for the truth. Before, that's when God will begin to move in our lives. Ha Samson's hair grew back, praise God, amen. I don't know, I just had a haircut yesterday, but, but I believe that it's going to come back, amen. We might have lost a little bit of the focus or whatever it is, but the hair is growing back. There's something that's starting to go, grow again. I believe that the wind is blowing again. Just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. 
I believe that people will begin to rise up. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. His presence has come. A fresh wind is blowing again. I believe it's stirring the hearts of believers. Something's stirring our hearts. This is what will change me. This, was what, this is what will, will, will cause me to become the man that God wants me to become. I am not that man at, at this point of time. But I am a work in progress. And if I get a hunger for revival, if I get a hunger for the presence of God, if I get a hunger for truth, if I get a hunger for the anointing, if I get a hunger for the Word of God, if I get a hunger for prayer, if I get a hunger for those sort of things, things will start to change and my hair will begin to grow again and the wind will blow again over my life and over your life. There is a stirring that's going on at the moment. That wind, glory to God. Let's hold it for a minute. <laughs> Right on cue. <laughs> I don't know if that was just trying to get rid of my message and tell me to hurry up or, or, or if you blokes are praying out there and you're telling me this enough of this stuff. The wind is blowing again. I, I believe the cry of the believer is being heard again. What attracts Jesus? What, what attracts Jesus to, to us? What will, what will cause Jesus for something to happen? Because God never changes. We're the ones that have drifted away. We're the ones that have gone astray. What will, what will change things? See, there was a time there when Jesus came to a place and, and to Jericho, and, and as he was leaving Jericho, there was a multitude that went with him. A multitude of people that went with him. But there was a man sitting by the side of the road. His name was Bartimaeus. And when he heard that it was Jesus, when he heard that it was Jesus, he started to cry out with a loud voice. I'm saying to you today, what will get the attraction of Jesus towards us? There was a multitude of people there. There would have been most surely many people sitting by the side of the road, begging and doing their thing. But Jesus is walking by. This man began to cry out with a loud voice, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. You've got to humble yourself. You've got to, we've got to change somehow or other. We've got to get rid of stuff out of our thinking. Start to cry out again to God, 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 have mercy on us. God, have mercy on us. And people, he didn't take any notice of what was going on around about him. People were saying, be quiet, be quiet. But it says that when people said that, he shouted the louder. See, we are influenced by people. We are influenced too much by people, what people say. Oh, you've got to do it this way. Political correctness will not get the job done. It's time to shout even louder. Other people are doing something different to us. Praise God, let them do what they've got to do, but I've got to do what I've got to do, and you've got to do what you've got to do. Blind Bartimaeus cried the louder, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. And it says that Jesus stopped. And he said, bring that man to me. And the guy came and he said, what can I do for you? He said that I might receive my sight. And immediately he was healed. What will bring God's attention to us? Just sitting around playing church will not. There's a lot of people following Jesus, but they, they're not really getting the attention. A lot of hundreds of thousands of people going to church, but nothing's happening. But there's got to come a voice. Somebody's got to start crying out, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on us to get God to us. 
come. And he came and he got totally healed. What will get God's attraction to us? There's a woman in the Bible. She'd had a disease for 12 years. She was getting worse. She'd spent all of her money. She was unclean. She had an issue of blood. Jesus is there. And she said in her heart, in her mind, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. It says that this little woman, she just headed off. And she just pushed through the crowd. She didn't care what people thought. It didn't matter what people were saying. She just pushed in through the crowd and she touched the hem of his garment. But I want to say this to you today. You can have a tenacity inside of you today that would say, God, I want to touch you. I want to touch you in my worship. I want to touch you in my praise. I want to touch you. I want you more. I want to touch you. You see, what will cause God's anointing to come again on me, on you, on the church? God, I want you more. God, I need you so much. I desperately need you. As we cry out to God like that, this woman, she said, I'm going to touch you. God, in our praise this morning, Lord, I want to touch you. I just want to touch you. I need you more. Lord, service this morning, it's all about you. It's not about me. It's about you. I pray today that you will be glorified in this house. That touch... That touch. There's more in this story than just being healed. There's a, there's a, there's a, a pattern. There's, a, there's a, something there that we've got to learn. There were many pe people, the Bible says, the disciples said, when he said, who touched me? They said, there are many people touching you. He said, no, 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 no. This one touched me. You with me? There's a lot of people touching me, but this one touched me. And this one caused virtue to flow out of me. And the woman, when he said, who touched me? Fearing, knowing that, that she'd been healed, she came and fell at his feet. She came and fell at his feet. See, tenacity... It means grabbing hold of something in such a way that you won't let it go. Friends, we can be so flippant in the church. We can get our, I'm going to say it, we can get our knickers in a knot over nothing. We need to get over ourselves. And let God be God, amen. Get over ourselves. Who touched me? Such a way that virtue flowed. God of his feet. Father, I'm going to quit. <laughs> I think I've said enough. This is it, amen? I don't know if anybody's caught what I'm saying this morning. Father, help us. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just stand to our feet. Just before, before we do that, while I was preparing this message, I, I sensed the Spirit of God was saying to me that there's going to be somebody here this morning and you suffer with a condition that's it's sort of in this uh, left nostril and it's pain that a lot of, sort of comes from your eye down through that left nostril and it goes into your jaw, into, like your teeth. And, and it, you, you thought you had something wrong with your teeth, but it's not your teeth, it's, it's something in your nose, like a sinus thing or something like that. 
Is there a person to hear the day? I love the pray with you. A lot of times people come up to me after the meeting and say, Neil, that was me. And the spirit of slap comes on me. <laughs> so, Rand, like it through your nose there, down into your jaw. You'd, you'd know if it's you, so I might be wrong. That's okay, I've been wrong before. And I must be wrong again. <laughs> but anyhow, praise the Lord. Let's just, uh, what are you going to sing? Okay, Revelation song. You're here this morning and God's speaking to your heart and you might just want to come and, and uh, just um, come into his presence and let God touch you. There's somebody here this morning, you've got a condition in your left shoulder. I'd love to pray with you. Uh, you'd be here this morning, that's for sure. But you don't have to be shy. Who's that person quickly? Left shoulder. Eh? Yeah. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Just lift your hand to Jesus. Let the presence of God just come over you in Jesus' name. Father, let the fire, let the power, let the anointing come all over her. Release her from that thing. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Be released. Loosen that shoulder right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're in this house today and you need healing in your body, just as we're singing this last song, just slip out. We'll pray for you. We believe God with you. Just let the power of God come around you right now. We love you. This coffee is going to be served out in the breezeway out there. Have a great week in Jesus' name. Let the anointing come.